Hello everyone. We are back with another topic from the distributed systems. Today we will talk about leader election. So let's start. So what is leader election? So leader election is a process using which we want to identify one node in our distributed system as a leader node. And that leader node will be responsible for some extra responsibilities. And after the leader election process has completed, we should be able to identify one node in our system as a leader node. So all the nodes should be aware of that particular leader node and all other nodes will assume themselves as a follower node. Now this leader node will be responsible for some special work. These extra responsibilities could be ability to assign the work to other nodes, ability to modify a particular piece of data. So let's take a look at the application of leader election in the distributed system. So if my application is a database application and I want to ensure that write is being handled by a particular node, only one node, then we can use the leader election process to elect that leader and that node will be responsible for all the writes. If my application requires the cluster management, if I am running a distributed cluster, then that management responsibility could be given to one particular node and that node could be identified using the leader election process. If my application requires a shared resource to be accessed and only one node should be able to access that particular resource, then also we can use the leader election process to identify the node and uh, the node identified uh, by the leader election process will be able to access the resource. The last example is if my application uh, runs a uh, lot of jobs and how do I distribute the, these jobs onto all the nodes. So we can run the leader election process, identify the node which should be responsible for scheduling that work onto all these nodes and then uh, all other follower nodes will be executing those jobs executing those assigned jobs. So what are the few applications where uh, this leader election is used internally? So Zookeeper is one of the distributed key value store where it internally uses leader election process to identify the node which handles all the writes. Kubernetes internally has a lot of use cases where internally it uses leader election. One of the use case is cube scheduler. So the role of cube scheduler is to schedule the pods onto different nodes and this scheduling is done by the leader node uh, elected via leader election process and all the, all the nodes which have been assigned different pods will run these pods. Similarly Kafka and Elasticsearch are other database systems which internally use the leader election process to manage the writes operations. So uh, these are the like few distributed applications which internally uses the concept of leader election out of box. So now let's say if we have one application where we want to implement the leader election process and uh, we need to identify one node as a leader. So how do we go about implementing it? So one of the way is using these leader election algorithms. So there are four algorithms commonly available, Bully's algorithm, Ring algorithm, Paxos and Raft algorithm. Now these algorithms are a bit difficult to implement and having a production system with good correctness is very difficult to achieve. So hence we will not see that lot of systems will use this to implement the leader election process. So what are the alternate methods? So in alternate methods, we can use some third party tools like uh, Zookeeper, Console, ETCD. These are like distributed key value stores, which internally provides a capability to do a leader election. This also adds a dependency that uh, our systems are dependent on these third party tools. So that is the trade off. We can also use Kubernetes to implement leader election process. If your system is already running on Kubernetes, so Kubernetes also provides a way to perform the leader election process. Or you can write your own distributed locking techniques which can be used to implement the leader election process. So in this video, we will talk about one approach using Zookeeper for the leader election process. So Zookeeper is a distributed key value store and keys in the Zookeeper form a hierarchical namespace. Uh, it looks like a directory path 
and each key will be storing some value. This key value pair is represented as a Z node in the Zookeeper system. So how do we use Zookeeper to implement leader election? So to implement a leader election process, each node which wants to contend for the leadership needs to follow these four steps. So first step is creating a session with the Zookeeper. And then using that session, each node will be creating a Z node. This Z node will be created with some special flags. Zookeeper will assign a sequential number to all these nodes. The node with the smallest number becomes the leader. So how do I know about all the nodes in the system? So that is the third step. You fetch all the Z nodes in the system. And you can see uh, that if you have the smallest number, you can assume that you are a leader. And then to handle the edge cases where leader might go down, you need to set up a watch onto the next smallest number so that if the leader goes down, the next smallest number will, will be able to take the leadership. So let's deep dive into all these four steps. So we'll be using Golang sample code uh, using the Zookeeper SDK. So first step is creating a session. So this session will be created with some expiry. Why do we need expiry? Because if you create a session uh, indefinitely, then we will not be able to identify when this leader node goes down abruptly. So we want to keep a expiry and we, we have to ensure that we keep on sending the heartbeat to the zookeeper. So that way zookeeper knows that this node is alive. And uh, if zookeeper stops receiving the heartbeat, then it will assume that that particular node is dead and it, the session will expire. So uh, in Golang, we can use uh, this connect method. We can pass the zookeeper URL. We can provide our heartbeat window that uh, we'll be sending. So when you tell zookeeper this, so zookeeper will create a session and internally also it will keep on renewing the session. The renew might be happening. Uh, generally, it will be happening. Let's say if your timeout is 10 seconds, so every five seconds, it will keep on renewing the same session. So once we have a session, the next step is to create a Z node. So all the nodes which will be contending for the leader election process. So all of them needs to agree upon a single resource on which they will be election resource on which they will be contending on. So in this example, we are taking example, let's say, or they are contending on election hyphen app underscore as a key path. Now this Z node needs to be created with two flags. First is ephemeral. What does ephemeral mean? the life of the node is associated with the session as soon as the session expires the node will be deleted automatically by the zookeeper the second flag is sequential so what does it mean that when you provide a resource key to the zookeeper zookeeper will automatically append some sequence number to the key and that becomes the identity of that particular z node so in this example a has been given a sequence number 1, B has been given sequence number 0 and C has been given the sequence number 2. From the Golang sample, we can use uh, create method where we need to specify the key and the value, we can put any value depending on the use case, we can define if you want to put some value. In this example, we don't need it. So we can put empty uh, bytes and third is the set of flags that we are passing into the zookeeper and uh, fourth paramet parameter is related to the um, access control. RBAC related uh, thing. So for now we are passing all the permissions. So now once we have Z nodes, so now we need to know that which node has the smallest number. So that's where third steps comes in, into the picture that every node will fetch all the children's of that prefix path and uh, see what all nodes exist in the system. And the node uh, which sees that that it has got the smallest number will become the leader. In this case, B will become the leader. And from the Golang code, so we can use the children method uh, from the SDK, passing a path, it will return you all the children's. And this list of children's you can iterate over and then see that if you have got the smallest number and then you can, that, then you can take the leadership role. Now, since it's a distributed system, anything can go wrong in the system. So that's where our fourth step com comes into the picture. So let's say if B 
node goes down and after its session has expired the node b will be deleted automatically by the zookeeper so how do we get to know about this and how how does the other nodes will know about it is so zookeeper has a concept of watch so effectively first thing is which node i should be watching over so like in this case the node a which has a sequence number of 1 it can become a leader only if 0 is not the leader so effectively a needs to watch over b similarly c can become the leader only if a is not the leader like because a will be the next in its sequence so c will be watching over a so so in this manner effectively you have to find the next smallest number from u you need to identify your node which you can follow and then set a watch over that particular node so whenever that particular node gets deleted you can take a corresponding action so in this golan in this golan example so first you identify which node you want to follow from all the children that you have got and then you can use this exist w method which will check the existence of that particular node as well as it will set up a watch over that particular node the watch returns golang channel and that channel is where you will be getting all the events related to that particular node so in this example if b goes down the a will receive that uh, zookeeper event uh, about b being not available or b being deleted and then based on that event uh, a can take the action that now it can declare itself as a leader and it can take all the responsibilities that that the leader node has in the system similarly if let's say a would have went down then what c would do is because now c knows that that a is not the next smallest number for uh, for c the b is the next smallest number so it can change its watch from a to c so what are the other scenarios that that your application should be considering first thing is uh, a follower node going down so the node can go down gracefully which means that while shutting down it can disconnect uh, from the zookeeper when you call the disconnect the session will expire immediately and zookeeper will delete that particular z node so your leader will now know that this particular follower is not available if leader was doing a task assignment to that particular follower node it will stop assigning tasks to that particular uh, follower now if the node going down was a leader node then during the graceful shutdown it will also disconnect which will delete the z node the next node will get the watch and then that node will take the leadership and continue similarly if your node shutdown was not a graceful shutdown then what will happen is the node going down if it was a leader it will continue to be leader for some time until your session expires when your session expires the node will be automatically deleted by the zookeeper and then the same uh, set of events will happen where the other node will become the leader another uh, scenario could be deployments or scale up activities scale down activities when lot of nodes might be going up and down during that period if you want to optimize on to the number of times the leader is being elected or number of times the watch is being set up so you can try to optimize those things uh, by writing some uh, business logic to implement uh, leader election in golang uh, so zookeeper has a uh, go sdk or you can also use this uh, package uh, which provides a wrapper over the zookeeper sdk it has a inbuilt implementation of the leader election so it makes it really simple to uh, use a leader election process over zookeeper that's all about leader election in distributed systems so if you want us to elaborate more on certain sections of this video do comment that's all for this video thank you